tonight on All Systems Go. Find out what our cast members think about bringing back older media properties on comment section. We also look at Animal Crossing Direct, Final Fantasy at PAX, and the CEO of Disney is stepping down. Remember to press up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A, and start for a brand new episode of All Systems Go, which is happening right now. Hello and welcome to All Systems Go, the show you'll love so much it'll turn your PlayStation gamer girlfriend into an Xbox. I'm Dan Snyder. And call me Mr. Sandman, bringing you a dream, I'm Kyle Leeds. Our favorite time-traveling samurai is back to battle the shape-shifting master of darkness, Aku. Once again in Samurai Jack, Battle Through Time. The show's original head writer, Derek Bachman, has a written an original story for the game and Phil Lamar returns as the signature voice of Jack himself. The game's release date is slated for the PS4 this summer. And the Tony Hawk documentary, Pretending I'm a Superman, debuts next week at the Mammoth Film Festival in California. Featuring extensive interviews with Hawk and fellow skateboarding pioneers Rodney Mullen, Steve Cabarello, and Chad Muska, the documentary follows the history of the skateboarding scene from its underground boom in the 90s and how the big bird man's games brought the lifestyle into the mainstream. The CEO of Disney, Bob Iger, stepped down yesterday, effective immediately. During Iger's tenure, Disney expanded its reach, purchasing Marvel Studios, Pixar, Lucasfilms, and 20th Century Fox. The reasoning he is stepping down, Iger says, is to take a more creative role within the company. Iger will remain with Disney until his contract expires at the end of next year. This replacement, his replacement is former chairman of Disney Parks, Experiences, and Products, Bob Chappick. The hype train rolls on for Animal Crossing fans following a special Nintendo Direct last week. The 25-minute presentation showcased a ton of new playable features in the upcoming game Animal Crossing New Horizons. The game featured a new progression system, several, multi several multiplayer options, and a way to connect your island on your Switch to the Animal Crossing mobile game Pocket Camp. All of these features and many more will be available when New Horizons hit shelves March 20th. Warner Brothers is in negotiations to cast Chris Evans in the upcoming Little Shop of Horrors remake. Evans would play the dentist, Dr. Oren Scrivello, who was originally played by Steve Martin in the 1986 adaptation, and Warner Brothers has already confirmed that Billy Porter is set to be the voice of Audrey too, and they are looking to cast Scarlett Johansson as Audrey, and Taron Egerton as Seymour. There is still no word yet of when Little Shop of Horrors will begin filming, but soon. Square Enix has announced that they will be reducing their involvement in PAX East. Focus is on the canceled Final Fantasy XIV panel due to health concerns relating to the risk posed by the coronavirus. The decision was made as a precaution to the current conditions of the virus in the East Asia region. The Square Enix staff in charge of Final Fantasy XIV was supposed to travel from Japan to their offices in, J in Boston. Final Fantasy XIV booth will still be available at the event. The Robots in Disguise are back in a new Netflix movie, Transformers War for Cybertron Siege. It's coming this year. It's bringing the Autobots and the Decepticons to streaming. All your favorite action figures are here. Let's take a look at the trailer, shall we? not allow Megatron to find the Allspark. Well, the Transformers are back again, and they're in very familiar territory. Optimus and Megatron are leading their robots and fighting over the Allspark as usual, all on their home of Cybertron, which is looking especially dusty. For the most part, they're sticking with the classic character designs, but Megatron's lips are drawing some eyes. Siege is the first of three movies coming to Netflix, and it's rolling out later this year. Nowadays, everyone is looking for a bankable property to bring back. But is that always a good idea, or are some things better off left dead? Our panel is going to throw down on comment section. Stay tuned as ASG returns in two minutes. Howdy, everybody, and welcome back to comment section. This week, we will be discussing revived series and how we feel about them. Should we let these zombies be revived, or should we smash their brains in? 
Joining me today is Darian, Dan, Anthony, and Jeremy. So what series have come back recently that we really think shouldn't have? Based on the quality, I gotta say Ghostbusters because that new Ghostbusters movie was awful. How awful was it? <laughs> it was so awful I'd never want to see it or think about it again. What about Star Wars? Mm, I feel like if they brought it back, but they didn't plan it out. And if they yeah. planned out, it would have been great. Because the first, the episode seven set up a lot of potential storylines. Uh, Last Jedi gets a lot of hate, even though it tried deviating away and expanding in and further into the universe. And then the, I think the, that's yeah. an example of them just trusting so much in the property, and with good reason. You can put out anything and it'll sell well, right? Just because mm -hmm. it's one of the biggest things out there. But a lot of people think they really did a disservice to the opportunity they had. And yeah. I think any Disney Star Wars thing from now on is going to have an air of suspicion around it. Yeah, so I actually really enjoy most of the newer Star Wars, um, but I think the issue that is super apparent is that old adage of, uh, what is it, too many chefs in the kitchen and nothing gets done. Um, so we had too many directors, too many writers putting their hands on things, kind of tug of warring the story in different directions. I mean, for instance, I think Rogue One is amazing and I actually do like The Last Jedi, but then, I don't know. Do you think they might make any more uh, Star Wars movies after this, or do you think they're, just, they're done? They're already making more, aren't they? They are? Yeah. Oh. It's going to be Disney Plus for a while, I think. Oh, so it's like a series or a movie? I think Ryan Johnson is still doing his own trilogy, as far as I remember. Oh, mm. Hey, hey, watch out. <laughs> watch out. I mean, do you guys have high hopes for them, then? Yeah, if Ryan Johnson's behind it. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> well, what series have come back, or are coming back, that you guys think have worked out really well? Uh, first and foremost, I have been a giant God of War fan since, mm -hmm. I mean, near the beginning. I'm, I'm, I'm young, so when the first one came out, I was probably only like six, but mm -hmm. um, I'm a huge God of War fan. They've meant so much to me, and uh, whenever the newest game came out, I was just so nervous that it wasn't going to be everything I needed it to be, and it ended up being more than that. It was by far the most immersive really version of that game. Mm -hmm. Critical success. Yeah, yeah, it was a beautifully done game. It showed that these kind of narrative-driven games can still be smash hits, and it really kept the franchise alive in my heart and alive in America. Well, so. what I want to say is that like a lot of the times when you bring something back, you have the opportunity to do something that you couldn't before. Like there was news about it in A Block, but Samurai Jack, when they did season five for that, it was on Adult Swim. So they could like actually show like blood, and they could like show character deaths, and I think that was a really good way to like sort of do that series justice. I know a lot of people were waiting it for so long. Maybe some of the final episodes people weren't thrilled with, but I think it was still a good thing that it happened. I liked it as well. Yes, mm -hmm. and one title that I think you very well may agree with, Doom. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> mm. Doom, Doom 3. Slayer. Doom 3 back in the day was my all-time favorite game for a little while. Really? And then when they brought Doom back and and they oh, they just kept it going. I mean, I don't even want to say it's more amazing. It's just Doom that we love just kept thriving. Oh, it was so refined. Oh man. They, you know, it, it's not really dead, but Halo? I think yeah. my, I'm just thinking about Halo Reach. <laughs> they, they, they Halo keeps going, but a new Halo Reach. Ugh. And the Halo Master Chief collection has done so well. It, that's true, yeah. Oh, but a reach. One of the best oh. values in gaming. Absolutely. Oh, yes. <laughs> and I have to mention, it's it, nobody really watched it when it first came out, but JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. This is just my excuse to say JoJo, but JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Oh, there you go. It's fill so out, good. Fill out your ASG bingo cards. <laughs> <laughs> JoJo. And what series do you guys think is never gonna come back, but you would love if it did? The Mother series. Oh, like I know Shigesato Itoi said that he was done and it was never coming back, but I would kill for Mother 4 because Earthbound is a masterpiece. Earthbound is by far one of my all-time favorite games. I'm just, I'm going to second that right there. I need that. I, I need that. They Just remake it or something. Like, come on. Yeah, Re put the whole trilogy on the Switch. Do it. Just I do it. It's been oversaid. Dragon Ball Z, Budokai, Tenkai, Ichi 3. It's, it's the only thing everybody in the Dragon Ball Z community wants. They're never going to do it, but it, everyone wants it. I'd buy it. And, uh, you're a Dragon Ball guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a, I'm not <laughs> a profound fan of infinite <sighs> wisdom, but I, I am a Dragon Ball Z fan. It's okay. I'll say after, it's okay. after Boo, I kind of tapered off. Okay. Well, what about, um, person, this is less of a series, more of just a game mode, but Pikmin. Pikmin 2, the multiplayer, oh my gosh. I want a new Pikmin 2 multiplayer. 
Uh, Pikmin's coming back. You gotta believe it, right? But I don't want a yeah. single player. I want multiplayer. Okay. See, I, I never indulged in multiplayer, but I I'd be willing to give it a try. Multiplayer in three, but I I primarily play for the single player. But you gotta hope it's coming back, right? They're running out like after Animal Crossing. It's like, what's next? Oh, and Animal Crossing. <laughs> no, Animal Crossing never went away. The, that's not part of yeah, this Animal conversation. Yeah, Animal Crossing has been continuous <laughs> since it came out. I don't think that. Really You're just listing things away. you like. <laughs> <laughs> I, li I like Pikmin, I like Halo, um, and... May, may I say one franchise that I really hope they won't bring back, but I know that they will because it's a very profitable title, the Batman Arkham series. Oh. Did they that already a, have teased it? And yeah. That was a story that was so well done. Even Origins and Knight had their own like high quality aspects. Even though those are the less favorites, City and Asylum are always the ones that get like the starlight. But th the story in its entirety is a phenomenal well, chapter in Batman. What do you think if they did Batman Beyond? Batman Beyond's Ooh. different. I would love a Batman Beyond game. I would that, play that. I was a huge fan of the show. Like, who wouldn't want that? That game would be edgy too. I would yeah. love to play that. <laughs> well, after the break, we will take a look at a review of the new Impractical Jokers movie. Plus, we'll see if the Social Network movie still holds true after 10 years. All systems go. We'll be right back. The popular hidden camera show where four guys embarrass each other has come to the big screen. This week, Jess and Anthony went to see Impractical Jokers, the movie. Let's see what they thought of it. Morning. The following program uh, movie contains scenes of graphic stupidity among four lifelong friends who compete to embarrass each other. So Practical Jokers movie. Something we didn't ask for, but we got anyway. I'm a huge fan of the Impractical Jokers. Yeah, I'm actually a huge fan of the Impractical Jokers as well. I've been watching for a number of years, so uh, I know a lot of people were like, oh, did we need a movie? And I was like, I don't think we needed a movie, but like, I want one. We've said this on our way out of the theater. It, this could have been shown on television. It, like, it should have been a made-for-TV movie. For those of you who haven't seen the show, basically four friends who have known each other for most of their life, they go out and do hidden camera challenges where they embarrass themselves in front of people. And if they, at the end of each episode, there's a loser who gets punished and it's the most cringy punishment every time. So basically, it was all these challenges in the middle of a cinematic, oh, we gotta <laughs> prove ourselves to Paul Abdul. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of the, the big curveball for me that I couldn't wrap my head around. I was like, maybe they're all big Paul Abdul fans, but this just seems like such a random premise for the movie and what they were kind of centering their challenges around. When it came to the cinematic parts, the cinematic parts, uh, without giving anything away, um, I felt like at times, I don't want to be harsh, but maybe it didn't feel like it was thought through. Fully. Yeah, and also at the end of the movie when they're supposed to get punished, the Joker who loses, I won't say who, ends up going to the party and they're just like, you broke the pact, but you know what, that's okay. And I'm like, what? Why? Yeah, and, well, and I hope that this isn't a spoiler, um, but then they proceed to give him another punishment after that, and it's kind of like, oh, I guess this was the real punishment? Yeah, he- But they didn't set that up at all, so I was kind of just like, oh, I guess, I guess we're doing this. However, if you are a fan of Impractical Jokers, go for the challenges. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's all I have left to say about that. Solid okay, yeah, should, one thumb Should up. you go see it? Maybe. Yeah, it depends on your level of dedication to the Impractical Jokers. So good job, Jokers. All right, before we end this, uh, do you want to say our favorite cast members at the same time on three? Yeah, sure. All right, ready? One, One two, two, three, Sal. Joe. We said the same name. It's okay. Don't listen back. Bye. Bye. A lot has changed about Facebook since its launch back in 2004. So knowing what we know now about the social media site, our cast member Darian thought he'd take a look at the movie about Facebook's creation. I know, I can't believe it either. If ever there was a film that defined the past decade, it would be this one. It's the story of a college student who started something out of his dorm room that grew into one of the biggest internet success stories of the century, in a decade when more and more young people are taking an active role in our country and world. It's a story about the corrupting influence of power and wealth, in a decade when it's become more visible how much unfettered capitalism can corrupt our country and the people living in it. There's so much to love about the social network. Its writing is so sharp and witty. Sorry, my brothers are the cleaners! You have part of my attention. You have the minimum amount. Because it is exhausting. Dating you is like dating a stairmaster. Its direction by the genius that is David Fincher brings out the best of every single performer. 
Its score is so interesting and memorable. It's one of the most universally acclaimed films of the decade and century, and it's easily one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. And in 2020, it can be said to be more relevant than ever now that Facebook has grown into a behemoth with the power to control the flow of information, and that has irreversibly changed the way we communicate and connect online. There have been talks about making a sequel to this film in light of recent events, and I am all for that. The story of Facebook is one that needs to be told now more than ever. But if they do make another film, I hope that they get Fincher and Aaron Sorkin back on board because it would not be the same without them. This film is a masterpiece. Do you often wake up in a horse-drawn cart after trying to cross the border into Elgin with a thief and an arrow in your knee? Well, us too. Stay tuned after the break to watch ASG's own Anthony and Garrett take on pillagers and dragons in Skyrim. It's the game that just won't die. Since 2011, Skyrim has been sapping hours of gamers everywhere. But believe it or not, there are still some people who have yet to play it. Garrett and Anthony were those on the chopping block, and let's see how they did adjusting to this open world. Because we are horrible at video games, secretly, in that hour, all we got done was literally getting. We to the escaped into town. We got we're like we're in the first town, so we're like nowhere. It's still pretty much the beginning of the game. So, let's start there. Look at that. We're a beautiful little Khajiit with white hair. So I think this is where the game essentially begins. Yeah, this is pretty much where it begins. The big dragon at the beginning? Nah, that that don't matter. <laughs> So something we were talking about earlier is that these games are kind of like the old fable games where yeah. you can be good or bad and I'm, I gotta tell you, I'm constantly tempted to just kill somebody so that this whole town chases me out. I mean, off camera we did kill a kid. Well, we tried to. You gave her a coin and we're just like, hey kid, I hope you're happy. That's the last gold coin you're getting. And then the entire town bombarded you. Really enjoy Oh! We're, Bro! They're just like us. We're cat people. Whoa! Dude, my hug rub dude, dude. Oh, dude, I'm a big fan of your work. Your last album was stellar. Um, no, but something we've noticed that's kind of interesting, and I, I guess was a draw of the original game, and it's something we like too, is like, you don't have to stay on the beaten path. So like, I'm, no. I'm following where the marker is taking me, but I'm literally just like, go yeah, whatever way how I you want. Get there, how you get there is pretty much your own choice, and you can bump in, find quest, and like, do whatever you want. So it's like you can like yeah you can take this path, or you way. can go over an entire mountain and find like a hermit and do a quest for him, and then go back to your main quest. Well, spoilers. Hey, I'm just kidding. I've never played this game. I don't know if it happens. If I don't find a hermit in this mountain, I'm returning the game. It's not even my game. We borrowed this actually, but I'm returning it to GameStop for them. Whoa! Holy crap, dude! This is genuinely really cool. Okay, we've been messing around, but this 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 no, just got it's dope. Me. It's super dope. This is pretty cool. Look at all this. Like you, like this is actually super cool ruins. We just stumbled upon this because I went off the beaten trail. This is the good. Th Wait, there are enemies here though. Oh, there is. Oh my god, I see the red dots. Oh, all right, guys. I guess we're playing the game for real. Whoa, there's a few people. That person's helping me. Why is she helping me? Oh, the bandits. Okay. Dude, she was not with me. She must have just been up here by herself. Bro, that, that goblin took a big fat swing. Oh, man. Oh, I forgot I have my fire. I have my fire. Oh. For a second, I thought that was you. Oh. Tell her to calm down. Tell her to calm down. She, dude, she needs some chapstick, though. Okay, so I need to hit A. A. I was kidnapped by these bandits weeks ago. They locked me up in the towers near Mistwatch. I managed to pick the lock and slip out while the guard slept, but now I'm completely lost. Wow, dude. Can you help me, please? You really do just run into weird... Dude, it's not a hermit, but you were right. Like, we went up this mountain and we ran into a side quest. Oh, thank you. But I should be fine now that you've shown me the way. Here, I just did some killing and started this. You take over, watch. dude. Bro, I'm gonna back... I'm actually gonna backstab. Yeah, let's see if that works like Dark Souls, where you can just sneak up and get a good, like, animation. Ooh, he's gonna turn around once he pulls that. Ooh, yeah, get up there, get up there. No, you didn't see me. Yeah. I'm... Ooh, you're still crouching. Get up from crouching, there you go. Okay, burn alive, rodent. Ooh, we might have to pause and get some potion. Potion, Oh. No sign of 
That was very ungamer. Open the door. This reminds me of some dark. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, so, so that's, that's what was kill that was what was killing me before. Can uh, you pull it again? What opens the door? Can you go over the door and open it? Right, yeah, I was thinking like a Zelda-like puzzle. Yeah, no. Man, that was smart thinking See, though. Yeah, this over here. Oh. Oh. Push, push them all in. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. What's this? Is there any symbols on the door? There's symbols wait, up there. Okay. Wait. What was? Okay, so we got snake, snake. Whale. Oh. Snake, snake, whale. Maybe I have to try the lever again. Yeah, yeah we did it. Hey. hey, look at us unlocking our first little thing. Oh, dude, there's a crystal there. Ooh, Ooh. we got a sword. We got that's some a great gold. sword too. Dude, this is cool. This is fun. Is that a soul gem? Yeah, it was. I don't know how to. I think we used. Bro, it's those... Grandpa's ashes. <laughs> how did you feel about this? Yeah, it's same. Like, it's just fun. It's like, okay, I can go do this, but. Hey, what's that up there? Go do your own thing. Go build your own character. You make your own story, and then it's like you go to the main stuff, and it's like even cooler. And then you find the side stuff, and it makes it even cooler because it's like there's stuff in this world that's really happening that I can look around it. Like it's awesome. Yeah. Like so, the thing that I'm loving so far, or the thing that I've loved so much, is we had this main quest, and we were kind of on our way to it, but all of a sudden you can just kind of go off and do whatever else. Um, that's. But that was, yeah, that was a super smart sentence. Um, but yeah, with that being said, this was pretty great. I might actually get and fully play Skyrim now because of this. Sadly, that's our show. But join us next week for another exciting episode of ASG. And be sure to check out our Instagram, our Twitter, our YouTube channel, and find this season's episode with additional content right there. I'm Kyle Eads. And I am Dan Snyder. All Systems Go is signing off.